lovely hot cup of tea. Shall I pop it down next to you? Yes, it is rather hot still. I wouldn't want you to burn yourself. There. I've just popped it down next to mine, which is quite cool now. So, did you find the place okay? <laughs> yes, it is jolly hard to find from the road, especially in this awful weather. Oh yes, absolutely. Warm yourself by the fire. Get comfortable. It's rather chilly out today. Mm. So, what brings you into our phrenology practice today. Ah, I see. You were referred by a friend. Now, I don't suppose this friend would have blonde hair and spectacles? <laughs> yes, I think I know the one. <laughs> So before we begin, let me reassure you that everything we do here is of the strictest secrecy and confidentiality. So whatever happens here stays within these four walls. As you are aware, the practice of Phrenology has gotten itself a little bit of a bad reputation of late, so I would hate to induce a scandal on your behalf by your presence here today, which is why I don't ask your name. But as you know, my name is Dr. Isabel Hastings. Oh yes, it's jolly good to make your acquaintance too. So do you know much about the phrenology practice? Oh. Well, allow me to divulge some information. I often find that just explaining the procedure and the background of phrenology really puts my clients at ease, so they can truly appreciate the complexities of the procedure. How is your tea? Oh, that's wonderful. So, phrenology comes from the Greek, the ancient Greek, bren, meaning mind and logos, meaning knowledge. And phrenology is the study of the organs in your brain. I studied at the Phrenological Society, so please take comfort in knowing that I know exactly what I am doing. So the brain can tell us a lot about your character. Thoughts, emotions, feelings, everything that has a bearing on your everyday life, which is why I presume you are here, right? to find out more about yourself and how that impacts on your social and love life and your everyday life in general. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I thought so. Most people want to know things about themselves to make them better partners or better socially ranked or get a promotion, find a husband or wife, whatever the case may be, phrenology has the answers. And Cool said that the brain is made up of 27 different organs. That's right, 27. 
and 19 of those we actually share with our animal cousins. Can you believe that? Madness, I know. So, the phrenology exam is frightfully simple to an outsider's perspective, yes, but it is dreadfully complicated to interpret the enlargements and indentations of the skull and truly reading the organs and how they reflect on your everyday life. Oh, no, 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 don't worry. It's simple, really. Enlargements mean that you use that organ too much, and indentations mean that you use that organ not enough. Really, we are looking for a very much well-rounded skull with organs that are all equal, naturally. So, I will be feeling the skull around your forehead, behind your head and your neck. Allow me to truly illustrate what I mean. As you see here, we have the organs of the brain as illustrated by Gaul. At the top here, you have organs such as hope, conscientiousness, self-esteem. Around here, you have destructiveness, secrecy, combativeness, and over here, tune, colour, all different things that I will be looking at in greater detail. So, as you can imagine, there is quite a lot to study. So, are you quite comfortable? Yes, would you care for some more tea? You're still drinking. Please feel free to make yourself comfortable. You may drink your tea during the procedure. Many of my clients find it to be a rather relaxing experience. So you may close your eyes, drift off. There's nothing that you need to do in particular. Just stay still. I won't need to ask any questions of you. I will be able to determine so much from just reading the lumps and bumps in your skull. Mm. Okay. So, let me put my tea down. And let me... Oh yes, of course. me whilst I'm getting this together. I have your very own chart here. And I will be filling it out as I make my observations. Alright. So, two hands are needed for this. I'm going to be coming a little bit closer to you. Do you permit me to come a little bit closer? Ah, oh, yes, very well. Okay, good. Okay. Now, let me take a look here. The superficial. Okay. Mm hmm. First things first, I will need to take a measurement of your skull, how large your head is. So, okay. 
sized head. Okay, so now I will be placing my hands upon your head. Do you permit me to do so? <laughs> Jolly good, thank you. And I'll be standing up for this point of the examination. Alright, so let me see. We'll be We do this on a numerical system. I don't suppose you have a bow, do you? Someone special? Ah, yes. 
I promised I wouldn't ask any questions. So now we'll be moving on to the third portion. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So, my dear, that brings us to the end of the exam. But may I just have one last feel? Now, even though I've spent a great deal of time studying your head. I like to do this conclusive feel just to cleanse everything that my thoughts have been predisposed to and just get an intuition on you as a person, not just a data. This will be the last exam, I promise. <laughs> Jolly good. Alright. Just clearing.
These findings are splendid. Absolutely splendid. Mm. You are quite the well-rounded person. No inherent vices that I can see, or personality defects, which is jolly good. You have no idea the amount of people who come in which are awfully odd. But I would say that your social skills are, are lacking, if I must be frank with you. Um, your shyness organ was rather enlarged and, you know, you must improve your social skills uh, because this would help you dramatically in those society situations that one finds oneself in, am I, am I right? Um, so yes, social skills need improving. Ah, yes, here, yeah, I also noticed that your secrecy organ was rather large too. Is there something you wish to get off your chest? I see, none of my business. <laughs> What else did I get? Um, your judgment and your reasoning Very well developed As were your kindness and empathy Which is always a delight to see Wit and humour were also on the enlarged side But I don't see that as a bad thing Especially not these days um, career prospects, yes. I would try to steer towards a career in which you can flourish under your own steam. I don't think you would necessarily suit being under someone else's rule, nor would you suit a career in construction, so stay away from those. For love and marriage, I see that you are not well disposed in opening up about your feelings, yes. Hmm. I see many young people nowadays saying whatever comes to their mind regardless of proper ways and respectfulness. They just blurt out whatever they are thinking and feeling, but not all of us are like that, but don't get too upset by this. Is um, What I'm trying to say is that for every goose there's a turkey. Although I might not be saying that correctly, but you know how the expression goes. You understand my, feeling, my meaning, right? Okay, great. What else did I find? Um, hope was very good. Um, friendship, very good indeed. Benevolence, mm, average. <laughs> June was very indicated. Might I make the assumption that you are not very good at singing? <laughs> yes, I quite agree. In my own head, I can sing as delightfully as a bird of paradise, but to others, I do somewhat sound like a strangled cat. So I tend not to sing in good company, just to myself when I am doing my womanly chores, yes. <laughs> okay. So, marriage and love. I would say stop looking so reverently for a partner. It's going to cause you so many problems if you go looking so feverishly for love. I would suggest being more open and free, open to new ideas, new things. Love will find you and someone is bound to come along. 
Here is your chart to take home with you. As you can see, I have numbered each one on a scale of one to five. Now, this may not mean anything to you, but to me, it gives me a very, very broad look about who you are as a person, your strengths and your weaknesses. So, I would be more than happy to transcribe you up a manuscript that, based on these and my personal interpretation of them in much more detail. Of course, that would be an additional cost, so it's entirely down to you. It would take um, roughly around five days, I would say, give or take. Ah, oh, wonderful. Well, if you'll permit me to just hold on to this, I can write you out my report in just under a week. Now, you may uh, come to collect it if you do not wish me to take your personal address. I see. Well, yes, come and visit me in five days and that will be ready for you. Mm. Oh no, it's not a problem whatsoever. I find it's very, very handy to have such a document at hand. Whenever you find yourself in challenging circumstances, you may refer to it at any point you wish to help you out. Now, would you care for some more tea? No? I see your handsome cab has arrived. Well, it's time for you to go, I see. Well, yes, you do take care, and please do come and visit me whenever you wish, should you personal circumstances change. Yes, please go steady in this awful weather, and I hope to see you soon. Toodaloo.